in this screencast I'm going to work out three problems dealing with motion. Okay, and it's going to bring your attention. We're going to use this formula in all of these examples. The distance you travel is equal to the rate of speed times the time you spend traveling. And this is something common to us. If we're going 50 miles an hour for two hours, we know that we've traveled 100 miles. Okay, so to, for this first problem, we want to answer this question. A, a boat heads upstream on a river that has a current of 3 miles per hour. The trip upstream stream takes five hours, the return takes two and a half. Assuming the boat is on cruise control, the speed is set uh, relative to the water, what is the speed of the boat? Okay, so we know we're going to go upstream, we're start at a certain point, thinking as a turnaround, thinking about that as negligible. So the distance that we're going upstream has to equal the distance we're going downstream. Now, we always want for a word problem to declare our variable. So we're going to say let r equal the speed of the motorboat. Very important. You always want to write that down. The distance upstream is going to be the rate of speed upstream times the time. Likewise, for the going downstream, we're given how long it takes to go upstream and downstream. So we can plug those numbers in. The rate upstream, all right, you're fighting the current. You're going to take your boat's speed, and you're going to subtract off the speed of the current. In this case, that's going to give us R, we don't know what the boat speed is, but we're calling it temporarily R, and then minus the speed of the current is 3 uh, miles an hour. So we get R minus 3. Similar for the rate downstream, this time we're going with the current, so it's going to add to our speed. We're going to have R plus 3. So we're going to take the R minus 3 and put it in for the rate upstream, and we know it traveled, it took us 5 hours. And then that's going to equal the rate of speed downstream for the boat which is r plus 3 times the length of time it took, which is 2.5. And now we just have a linear equation. We're going to multiply out and then isolate the variable. Okay, so in this case, multiplying through, and then we're going to subtract, uh, we're going to add over the 15 and subtract the 2.5r over to get the simplified equation. 2.5r equals 22.5. Okay, and then next, as usual, once we isolate our variable, we're going to divide by that coefficient to get that r is equal to 22.5 divided by 2.5. Compute that out, and you're going to see that you get 9. Now, again, think about the units on here. The rate we're talking about is miles per hour, and there's our answer. Okay, so for, again, for that, it's always important to indicate the units on your answer. You always want to answer it in English. Okay, here is the next question we're going to look at. So we were given that a tight end catches, or sorry, a tight end can run the 100 yard dash in 12 seconds, and a defensive back can do it in 10 seconds. All right, so that's telling us, all right, it gives us the rate, it gives us how fast they can run. All right, we're assuming in this problem that that's their top end speed or their, their constant speed. So we know that the tight end can run 100 yard dash in 12 seconds, so the speed of the tight end is going to be the distance divided by the time. In this case, it's going to be 100 over 12. Likewise, the defensive back can do it in 10 seconds. All right, now the problem is telling us that the tight end catches uh, the pass at the, the at the 20 yard line, but the defensive back's behind it at the 15 yard line. They're, but since the defensive back is faster, it can catch up eventually. We want to know um, at what yard line will the defensive back catch the tight end. Now we can see here that the defense of the tight end is going to go a shorter distance than the defensive back. If you take the, the distance the tight end ran and add 5 to it, you're going to get the distance that the defensive back ran. Now what we know from the problem is that both players run for the same amount of time, but the lengths are a little bit different. We can compute the rates, as we illustrated before. The, the rate of speed of the tight end is going to be uh, tw to, uh, 100 over 12 or 25 over 3 yards per second for the defensive back. It's going to be 10 yards per second after we simplify. The unknown in this case is going to be t. We're going to use that to then determine um, distance after we determine the time that they've ran for. So t in this case is our variable. It's the amount of time each player runs. We're going to then plug those in the appropriate places. So the defense, or the, sorry, the tight end rate of speed is 
25 thirds. We're going to multiply that by t. That's the amount of time that the tight end runs for. Plus 5 is going to equal uh, the rate of speed of the defensive back, which is 10 times t. And then we want to solve this equation for t. So maybe we want to clear the fractions out by multiplying each term on the left and the right by 3. The only denominator we see in the problem. That simplifies the equation to 25t plus 15 equals 30t. Subtract to 25t over. Then simplify our equation becomes 15 equals 5t. Divide by 5 and we get that t is equal to 3 or 3 seconds. Now that's not the answer to the question. The question asks, how far upfield did the defensive back catch up with the tight end? The defensive back's um, rate of speed is 10 yards per second. And if he's going to run for 3 seconds, that's going to be 30 yards upfield. Now, upfield from the starting point. Okay, It's also good to just check that your units match up here. So the rate on the 10 or the unit associated with the 10 is yards per second, the 3 seconds, and then we end up with yards in the end. All right, so we're taking, we're starting at the 15-yard line. The defensive back is add on 30 yards to that, and then it means that he is going to catch up to the tight end at the 45-yard line, and hopefully make the tackle there. Okay, so that's the answer to our question. So we had to find the time that they ran for first to then be able to answer the question. All right, now next our last example. So we have this uh, person, Kim, is in the airport, all right, and she's a little bit bored, so she decides to you know, time herself walking on um, one of these walkways you'll see at an airport, so just a moving walkway. They typically move about two and a half feet per second. Now, what we're assuming here is that it takes her a total of 40 seconds to go up and back, meaning you're gonna, it's going to take her 40 seconds to go with the movement, the 50 feet with the walkway, and then 50 feet back against the walkway. So she's got to be walking gr at a speed greater than two and a half feet per second, all right? or else she wouldn't be able to overcome the movement of that walkway. And that's what we're looking for. What's her walking speed? We're assuming that's a constant throughout here. All right, now, one thing we don't know in the problem here is how long it takes her to walk in each um, going with and against the walkway. If we knew that, we'd be able to answer the question a little bit easier. We don't know that in this case. Okay, we're looking for the, the constant walking speed. We just know the total time it takes her to walk is 40 seconds. So the time spent walking with plus the time spent walking against the motion of the walkway has got to equal the total time spent walking, which we're given in the problem as 40. Now, to determine the time spent walking with or against the motion of the walkway, we're going to take our distance equals rate times time formula. We're going to solve it for t, or the time, and that gives us the time is equal to the distance over the rate. Now, we have to incorporate that the walkway is moving in one direction at 2.2.5 feet per second. We're going to let r, our variable in this case, be Kim's constant walking speed. Again, we're assuming that's going to be in feet per second. And then we need to input what we know um, involving our variable also uh, into this statement. So we know the total time walking is 40 seconds. The time spent walking with, well, how far did she go? She went 50 feet. How long, uh, or what was her rate of speed? Well, going with the motion, it's going to be whatever her constant rate is plus the speed of the walkway. So it's R plus 2.5. Time spent walking against, well, let's see, she went 50 feet, and her rate is walking against the movement is going to be whatever her speed is, and then we got to deduct the speed of the walkway because she's fighting the motion. So it's R minus 2.5. That's going to equal 40. Now we're going to solve this rational equation by clearing out the fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator, which is R plus 2.5 times R minus 2.5. So we're going to multiply each term on left and right of this equation by our least common denominator. And then simplify by canceling out the common factors from the numerator and the denominator in each term. That will result in a simpler equation for us to solve. And we're going to see 
that we're going to end up with a quadratic equation for this example. The other two examples were linear equations that we resulted in solving. Okay, so we're going to cancel out the r plus 2.5 in the first term on the left, the r minus 2.5 from the second term on the left, and then we just have to multiply the rest of them out after we rewrite this. Okay, so after we rewrite, we're going to multiply out by distributing each term to each term. Okay, on the right hand side, if you distribute the um, r through the second parenthesis and the 2.5 and then simplify by combining like terms, you're going to be left with r squared minus 6.25. Now distribute the 50s through and the 40 on the right, you get r 50r minus 125 plus 50r plus 125 equals, and then distribute the 40, we get 40r squared. 40 times 6.25 is uh, 250. So now we know how to solve these. We're going to try to get 0 on one side, everything else on the other. Solve our quadratic equation. So just simplifying a little bit more, the 125s drop out, we combine and we get 100R on the left. Subtract 100R from both sides and that gives us this reduced quadratic equation, 0 equals 40R squared minus 100R minus 250. You always want to write it with a positive uh, coefficient in front of your squared term and then in descending order also. Alright, so it looks like I missed the r here. It's supposed to be 4r squared minus 10r minus 25. Now that would give you your a, your number a, uh, b, and c if you want to use the quadratic formula. This does not factor, so you actually do need to use the quadratic formula here. Plugging the numbers in, you're going to get 10 plus or minus square root of 500 over 8. And then separately computing those, 10 plus the square root of 500 over 8 is approximately uh, 4.045. Okay, that's going to be feet per second. If you look at that expression with the minus sign, you're going to get 10 minus the square root of 500 over 8, and that's going to be approximately negative 1.545 feet per second. Now, in this case, our rate is not going to be negative, so we're going to throw out the uh, negative term, and our final answer in this case is going to be approximately 4.045 feet per second if we round to three decimal places. So, in all these examples, we converted the words into an equation, and then we used our equation-solving techniques to solve the equation and afterwards answer the question.